So Tucker Carlson uh, is in a little bit of trouble. Uh, He is under fire from some racist, misogynistic things that he said back in the uh, 2000s. Uh, uh, Media Matters recently released a trove of audio recordings from Carlson's time as a call-in for the Bubba the Love Spongish radio show. So, look, we talked about that yesterday, some of the misogynistic stuff. So now let's get to uh, what he thinks about the war in Iraq. Now, look, uh, Tucker Carlson, of course, he says, well, I wasn't in favor of the war in Iraq. Uh, I I don't think the war in Iraq is a great idea. I am an anti-war voice, and he has been lauded by progressives, uh, even some that have come on his show, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Rokana, etc. They're like, hey, Glenn Greenwald, like, hey, look, we don't agree on a lot of issues, Tucker, but we are anti-war. And what I want to do is I want to want you to listen to some of those tapes uh, and show why he's really the way that he is and why he is not a great ally in the anti-war movement. So first, uh, we're going to go with, of course, uh, what he thinks about the Iraqis and their culture. So let's take a listen. These uh, Arabs in Iraq aren't playing. Yes. We're the only ones that are they playing. They don't like us. We are the only ones that are playing over there. They're yeah, not they're playing. They're so just awful. They're animals, they're dude. Awful. They, I, I, they are. I, I, I'm telling I hate you that. The war. I have no, you know, I'm not defending the war in any way, but I just have zero sympathy for them or their culture, a culture where people just don't use toilet paper or forks. Or hey, I gotta, I, I, and the way they treat women. You know, I, I agree with you. Their, their culture is, is, but you're in their homeland. And you're over there as an American who they hate, and they want nothing more than the Americans off of their soil. So they're yeah, not going to play the games. Second we, I mean, they can just shut the fuck up and obey, is my view. And, you know, <laughs> gotta, the I, second we leave, they're going to be calling for us to return. Because I just think, they can't govern themselves. I just think- so just shut the F up and obey. I mean, we come into their country, we invade their country, we overthrow their leader, and then we install our own puppet. And Tucker Carlson's like, just shut up and obey. God, why don't you start acting like human beings? I mean, I'm not even using toilet paper forks. I mean, come on. God, animals. That's Tucker Carlson, what he thinks about people in Iraq. And again, he wants us to believe that he is a, a voice for, I don't know, the, uh, being a anti-war, right? An anti-intervention. Well, there's more. Right. Uh, Now, here's the thing. Again, we don't agree on like that, the the reasoning. Right. So, okay, the anti-war light uh, right and the anti-war left. We basically agree on the outcome, not going into endless, ridiculous wars. Right. But here's where we're different. Progressives believe that hey, maybe we shouldn't be, I don't know, imperialistic, right? And invade countries randomly for no reason in order to get their resources, right? We shouldn't get into the affairs of other countries because we end up doing more harm than good. I mean, look at Libya, right? Uh, And again, look at Iraq, look at Afghanistan. So look, we do a lot of harm. Look at the innocent people who are killed in our wars, right? And we look at that and we say, as progressives, we should not repeat that because that is a major problem. Now, the difference between us and people like Tucker Carlson is they look at them uh, as inferior people not worthy of our attention. They have a terrible culture, and we shouldn't just waste our time with these subhumans. You don't believe me? Well, you might want to listen to the next video here uh, or the next audio clip uh, and hear it directly from Tucker Carlson. I mean, if Iraq turns out to be a great thing... How can it turn out to be great? How could you salvage Iraq at this point? I don't... You know, it's beyond our control. I mean, if somehow the Iraqis decided to behave like human beings or something, I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond that we can't... Well, I, mean, I don't think we can control it. I think that's, that's the whole lesson of Iraq, is that it's very difficult to control other people's countries. 
fine people of Canada, please don't under please understand that Tucker is a very good friend of mine, but I in no way, shape, or form share his views of how he feels about people from Canada. I love Canada. They're great people up there. Tucker feels if you guys are a bunch of assholes. And he no, said, I, he, I yeah. totally disagree. No, I, Brent, if I didn't like Canada, spies, it, I wouldn't consider it worth invading. No, I see, mean, Iraq is a crappy place filled with a bunch of, you know, yeah. semi-literate, keep primitive buried, monkeys. Keep That's why yourself. it wasn't worth invading. But Canada is a solid place with good-looking women and good fishing. You will we should invade. Iraq is a crappy place filled with semi-literate, primitive monkeys. Ah, they're not worth invading. Canada, however, whew, they're worth invading. I, I know that Canada thing is probably a joke, uh, but I don't think he was joking when he called the people of Iraq semi-literate monkeys. Fun fact, right? So before we actually got involved in the country of Iraq, did you know that they had one of the best education systems in the Middle East? I'm not kidding. Uh, under his rule in 1972, Saddam Hussein established and controlled the national campaign for the eradication of illiteracy and the campaign for compulsory free education in Iraq. Now, what they did is that they had nationalized their oil industry, right? Uh, and they used that money to establish universal free schooling up to the highest education levels. As a result, hundreds of thousands of of Iraqi citizens learned to read in the years following the initiation of the program. Not only that, but the government used that money uh, to support families of soldiers, granting free hospitalization to everyone and subsidies to farmers. Uh, in all, Iraq created one of the most modernized public health systems in the Middle East. That earned Saddam an award from the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. So that's on health and education, right? Uh, now, according to the same agency, prior to the first Gulf War in 1991, Iraq had one of the best educational performances in the region. Primary school gross enrollment rate was 100% and literacy levels were very high. In fact, they said, it is generally agreed upon that before 1990, the educational system in Iraq was one of the best in the region in addressing both access and equality. So what happened? Well, we happened. The situation for education and healthcare deteriorated rapidly due to several wars, that's not our fault, except for the one, of course, and U.S. economic sanctions. It is also agreed that education has suffered as a result of American-led domination, sanctions, and, of course, regional instability. So, I'm not saying Saddam was awesome. I'm not saying that at all, right? Yes, he was a dictator. He was very brutal. He did terrible things to the Kurds, right? That should not be ignored as part of his legacy. However, what also should not be ignored is that he nationalized the oil sector and used that money to help education and create vital programs, and, and especially education for his people. And he was also secular. And that's also something that doesn't get talked about a lot. And those programs, turns out, they were wildly successful. Now, what is one thing that the United States cannot handle when it comes to foreign countries? Countries that nationalize their oil interests. The Iraq War, at least the second one, was almost completely 100% predicated on getting access to their oil. 100%. You cannot national. How dare you? How dare you nationalize your oil interests? No, 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 no. We want multinational corporations, oil companies, to have access to your oil. And we are willing to do sanctions on you, invade you, and everything for access to that oil. Look at what's going on in Venezuela. Same kind of situation. Maduro's not a great guy. Just like Saddam Hussein. Not a great guy. But the United States is playing by the exact same playbook. Sanctions weakening their government as a prelude to invasion and taking their natural resources. Of course. So, that's the truth about Iraq. 
and calling them semi-literate monkeys ignores the long history of American interventionism in the Middle East. But, of course, Tucker Carlson, that involves nuance and intellectual curiosity. No, 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 this is much easier to be extremely racist than to actually look at the truth. And that is the difference here. The overall point is progressives, we are anti-war because of our values. There's nothing progressive about war. It destroys lives, economies, and nations for no real, actual, tangible benefit for the country being invaded. Whereas people like Tucker Carlson and the alt-right, they're anti-war because of a deep-seated racism, hatred of the other, and a desire to isolate America. We both agree. Endless war, not a great thing. But that is the end of where we agree. And too many progressives, uh, and too many progressives, I should say, I understand that that may be enough, right? That we agree that we should stop endless war. But, okay, I, I get that. So for those of you who do uh, feel that way, just understand who these anti-war right-wingers really are and what they really stand for. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.